Hi there, Madcap Propeller Heads. Welcome to Flare 2019. Here's what's new. Right away, you'll notice that Flare looks different. That's because the interface themes in Flare have been redesigned with a fresh new look. If you want to check each of them out, go to File, then Options, select the Interface tab, and choose a theme from this dropdown. Also, the Start page has been redesigned and simplified. Neat, huh? Here is a big change in this version. Flare now lets you create micro-content. Micro-content is what it sounds like, short, concise information that stands alone and is easily consumable. In Flare, it begins with the creation of a collection of brief phrases and corresponding responses, such as questions and answers. After generating HTML5 output, these phrase-response combinations can be used in different ways as users interact with your output. The easiest, quickest way to use micro-content is to include it in the search results of your HTML5 output. What happens is that you'll get featured snippets that appear at the top of your search results. Don't confuse featured snippets with the regular kind of snippets that you create in Flare. And even if you haven't heard the phrase featured snippets before, you probably know exactly what they are. Have you ever Googled something and all of a sudden you see a short set of steps? Maybe you got amnesia and forgot how to wash your hands, so you look it up. That set of steps is what you see in the search results and is a featured snippet. So now, thanks to micro-content, you can do the same kind of thing in your HTML5 output. Your featured snippets don't necessarily have to be steps. They can be whatever you want, including images, tables, videos, anything. It's just a way to give your readers a very quick answer to a specific question or search keyword. And there are some other cool possibilities for micro-content besides just featured snippets. We're talking about chatbots, field-level help, and maybe an FAQ database. Flare lets you create the micro-content phrases and responses, and then using your own imagination, you can potentially do all kinds of cool things with that micro-content. Another new feature in Flare is CSS variables. Variables have always been available for use with content in Flare, and now they are also available with styles to enhance your single sourcing. A CSS variable lets you place the value for a style in one place and reuse it throughout a style sheet. As with other kinds of single sourcing, this can help with speed, ease of use, and consistency. Whenever you want to change the value, you only need to do so in one place, and the new value is propagated everywhere that the variable is referenced. For example, maybe your company has a particular brand color that you use in many places in your style sheet. Instead of entering that color directly everywhere in the style sheet, you can create a CSS variable that uses that brand color. Maybe you even name the CSS variable brand, although you could technically name it anything you want. Then, just insert the CSS variable every place in your style sheet where you want to use that color. Later, your company decides to reinvent itself, and this includes changing its brand color. Instead of changing the color in lots of places in your style sheet, you just change it in the variable, and voila, the color is automatically changed everywhere. Also new to Flare 2019 is a new plugin for Zendesk. With this plugin, you can publish clean XHTML or skinless HTML5 output to your Zendesk Help Center dashboard. You have the option to install the plugin when you install or upgrade Flare. You can publish draft versions of your content before publishing to Zendesk. You can also publish directly to categories and sections you've created. Say that you want to publish updated content for your knowledge base that you host on Zendesk. You can tell Flare what categories and sections to publish to in Zendesk. When the publishing process is completed, your knowledge base will be updated in Zendesk Help Center based on the structure you designate in Flare. If you only want to update the FAQ section in Zendesk, you can simply tell Flare to publish that particular section. Your FAQ in Zendesk is then updated from the publishing that you configured in Flare. It's just that easy. And here are a few other enhancements that you might notice in Flare 2019. There's also now an option to view the interface in Chinese, so if you're more comfortable with that language, you can choose it when you launch Flare, as long as this checkbox is selected in the Options dialog. If you generate output with Elasticsearch, you'll notice some enhancements in the Content Services portal. This includes the ability to view micro-content that you create, as well as the ability to sort columns by search counts and date. Another change in Flare 2019 is that the project templates in Flare have been redesigned and streamlined. If you need to create a brand new project, be sure to take a look at these new templates. You can also click a link in the New Project Wizard to browse other templates from the Madcap Software website and download any that you want to use. And finally, when you open a style sheet in Flare, you'll see an ellipsis button next to each property. Just click the button to set the values for that property. This new design is especially helpful when you have multiple mediums open in the style sheet editor, making the interface less crowded. For more information about all of these new features, see the What's New topic in the online help. 
Enjoy the new Flare 2019.